Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay. Well, today we're, we're very uh, lucky to have Itsuko Ito uh, join us, and uh, she will tell us some exciting things about the, the Schrager model and various extensions of it. So please go ahead, Itsuko. Ah, okay, thank you very much. So yeah, actually, first of all, I would like to thank organizer for inviting me this seminar. And uh, I'm Etsuko Ito from Yukawa Institute, Kyoto University. And today I'd like to talk about uh, the uh, actually uh, recent uh, our paper. Uh, this is uh, based on the collaboration with Akira Matsumoto. He is my postdoc. And uh, uh, Yuya Tanizaki, he is also a member of U uh, YITP, Yukawa Institute. And in this paper, so we propose uh, uh, three independent uh, uh, calibration method to obtain the hadron mass spectra uh, in the Hamiltonian formalism. And uh, actually, uh, we demonstrate these three uh, calibration methods for two flavor Schwinger model. Uh, this is uh, uh, the simplest uh, gauge theory in one plus one dimension. And uh, this is an outline of my talk. So first, uh, I would like to uh, show the introduction. Actually, I would like to explain a uh, basic motivation of this work. And the second session, I will give a brief review of Schwinger model. And the third part is a main part. So this is uh, our proposal of calculation method of Hadron spectra. So there is a three method. A correlation function scheme and one point function scheme and dispersion relation scheme. And finally, I will summarize my talk and give a pros and cons of these three methods. So, okay, so let me uh, start the introduction. So, actually, uh, as you know, so QCD describes the dynamics with strongly interacting particles. So, to obtain some a uh, quantitative prediction of the theory. So we need some ab initio uh, calibration of QCD or gauge theory. And so far, uh, Lattice Monte Carlo QCD is a most powerful tool. So it is uh, based on Lagrangian formalism and uh, uh, it is only non gauge invariant non perturbative regularization method. And uh, the numerical simulation was started by Mike Freud in uh, uh, 1979. And for this more than 40 years, a uh, good calibration method, algorithm, so-called hybrid Monte Carlo algorithm, and uh, the other uh, calibration method has been developed. So this is uh, very nice, but however, uh, it has a huge problem so it is very famous program, so-called the sign program. So the uh, hybrid Monte Carlo algorithm suffer from the, this sign program when we consider the real time evolution of QCD or a finite density QCD. And uh, unfortunately, it is proven uh, the computation complexity of the sign program. Uh, generally speaking, it is a uh, NP hard uh, by the uh, Troyer and Wiese in 2005. So we high energy theorists want to take the thermodynamic limit of the system size, but uh, the computational complexity grows non-polynomial, non maybe more than exponential. So practically speaking, it is impossible to perform such a uh, calculation. And I think based on this, uh, 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 proof, I think around uh, since uh, 2005, several alternative methods based on the Lagrangian formalism, uh, so-called uh, Lifzitz-Symbol method and uh, complex Langevin method and uh, tensor renormalization method, hmm? okay, uh, has been proposed. But uh, honestly speaking, I cannot say it uh, works out totally well. And uh, you can see the recent uh, uh, such a situation in the recent review given by the Keitaro Nagata, and it is uh, published by PPNP last year. So, and we are looking for the, some completely different method. 
and uh, there are uh, recently a uh, good uh, con uh, and the such a candidate is a quantum computation and the tensor network based on the Hamiltonian formalism. And the great advantage of the Hamiltonian formalism there is the absence of the uh, sign problem from the beginning. So this is a great advantage uh, of the uh, quantum field theory in Hamiltonian formalism. And uh, furthermore, recently, uh, recent emergence of quantum computer and quantum supremacy uh, has uh, raised our hope. And uh, to see an um, actual uh, quantum supremacy for QCD, we have to overcome several uh, issues. But at least for the, uh, we have to treat the uh, large dimensional uh, Hilbert space in the Hamiltonian formalism. But uh, at least the such a memory program, uh, quantum computer looks very promising because one qubit system can describe the two dimensional Hilbert space and the n qubit system can be described by the direct product of these two dimensional spaces. So uh, the n qubit system, the scaling law is an exponential of n. It looks very promising. But the uh, one uh, huge issue in the Hamiltonian formalism is a uh, 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 gauge field. Actually, the gauge field has an infinite dimension of a Hilbert space. And uh, once we uh, naively truncate the, uh, such a Hilbert space, uh, it uh, breaks the uh, gauge symmetry. And uh, this issue has been a serious problem for many years and uh, has been challenged in various ways uh, at the present. And uh, so this is a huge problem. However, uh, today's talk is motivated by the uh, last line of the list. So even though we have ideal quantum devices and the suitable formulation of quantum gauge theory, we have to know some good calculation method to investigate the QCD phenomena, actually QCD observable. And uh, actually we are beginner of <laughs> Hamiltonian formalism of quantum field theory. So finding efficient method is another important task uh, that uh, high energy theorists have to do. So this is uh, our motivation. And let me show you one simple, easy uh, example. Uh, actually, we have a uh, different calculation method uh, in the Hamiltonian formalism for the QCD observable. So let us consider the q cuba potential. So in the uh, conventional method based on the Lagrangian formalism or uh, under the uh, lattice Monte Carlo QCD, we firstly generate the configuration without probe charges. And then we calculate the value of the Wilson loop on the contour C and the temporal size is T and the special size is R. And after taking large T limit, it's exponentially related to Q cuba potential VR. And the actual calculation, uh, lattice calculation, so we calculate the uh, product of link variable and extract the data of its exponent. This is a basic strategy. Then we can uh, obtain the, this kind of corner potential and uh, as a function of R and the long distance region is uh, uh, given by the linear potential, you know. And on the other hand, the, in the Hamiltonian formalism, of course we can do the same calculation uh, to, that uh, we calculate the Wilson loop as a product of the link variable and uh, uh, find, extract the uh, q cuba potential of its exponent. But we can take another way so, and uh, at least the Schwinger model, we do the, such a calculation. And uh, so, uh, at least the Schwinger model, we can construct the Hamiltonian with two probe charges, Q and Q bar, with a distance L in the uh, one dimensional spatial direction. 
And actually, insertion of two probe charges induces an additional electric flux between them. So it can be described by the uh, shift of topological theta down. I will explain in detail later. But anyway, so we introduced uh, this site-dependent theta term. And using such a uh, site-dependent theta term, where the interval between two probe charges has a larger theta value than the uh, outside of the, this interval, then uh, it makes a uh, uh, L dependent Hamiltonian HL. And we generate the ground state of this Hamiltonian HL and measure the uh, energy of the ground state EL. And finally, by subtraction of the vacuum energy at L equals zero, we obtain the QQ bar potential. So this is another strategy. And actually, uh, this uh, calculation method uh, give a clean signal. So we, uh, in this paper, uh, using this strategy, uh, QQ bar potential for Schwinger model has been calculated by using the uh, uh, quantum algorithm. And uh, in this paper, the qubit size is uh, still small and the data suffer from the large uh, finite volume effect, but uh, I hope you can see the linear behavior of the potential or the Schwinger model as a blue data. And uh, the signal is rather clean because uh, actually in this uh, classical uh, Monte Carlo calculation, uh, the generally speaking, exponent is a, a bad signal to noise ratio. And uh, so to obtain this clean signal, they use the uh, smearing method to reduce the statistical error. But uh, uh, the, such a, a linear, uh, we can directly uh, calculate uh, this quantity potential uh, in the Hamiltonian formulas. This is a great advantage in the alternative method, calculation method. And now, uh, this is uh, uh, today's main subject. Here, we would like to consider how to calculate the Hadron spectrum in the Hamiltonian formalism. And uh, this is a uh, you know, very important task for QCD study because you know, uh, actual Hadron masses cannot uh, explain uh, by just mm. adding up the quark masses. And no uh, matter sorry, <clears throat> could I ask a question about the QQ bar potential in yes. the Schwinger model? Uh, yes. For zero mass, it should uh, flatten, right? It should, um, ah, there should yes. be sc a screening, right? For zero. Yeah, screening. Mass. Yeah. But uh, you see, this is a, uh, actually, this uh, dotted line is an uh, uh, analytical result, oh, okay. uh, the finite uh, uh, volume. So, I see, I see. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And it should be uh, show the plateau in long distance region, but uh, because of finite volume effect, it's uh, waving. So, and uh, we investigate uh, how large uh, size shows a uh, um, so visible plateau. So we need the uh, more than thirty qubit calculation to see the plateau. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it should be screening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. thank you. Yes, thank you for asking. Okay, so let me consider the Hadron mass. So, and uh, yeah, and uh, okay, so yeah, actually the Hadron mass, uh, determination of the Hadron mass is uh, important and uh, it is very important to correctly calculate the effect of the non-perturbative interaction. So, and in the conventional lattice Monte Carlo, uh, the Hadron mass uh, is calculated by the uh, imaginary time correlation function. So the operator O, actually hadronic operator, uh, uh, this is O is the Hadron operator. So we uh, calculate the uh, two-point function of the Hadron operator. And uh, the, uh, we take the uh, long propagation time 
and it must be the exponential, it must show the exponential decay of stable hadron mass. And so from the, uh, these logarithmic plot, we read off the slope as a, a hadron spectrum. And actually this calculation method works very well. So this is an example plot of the a bit old data, but uh, uh, for the uh, several hadron masses obtained by the lattice Monte Carlo. The red data is the lattice Monte Carlo data and the black bar shows the experimental data. And uh, so, you know, the input parameter of the lattice calculation is uh, only three in this case. So UD quark mass, they are degenerated and the strange quark mass and uh, uh, lattice spacing A that uh, determine the uh, physical scale. So using the three input parameter and more than 10 hadron mass prediction are uh, consistent with the experimental data. This is a great result of the lattice Monte Carlo calculation. And now we would like to give an alternative calculation method in the Hamiltonian formalism. And hopefully we would like to, we would like to uh, try to do the simulation even in the uh, finite density region or uh, no, uh, non-zero topological uh, theta term region. So this is uh, our motivation. And now, so this is a, a brief summary of uh, our work. So to test the uh, Hamiltonian formalism, actually tensor network method is also useful. And uh, so there are several tensor network methods, but among them, uh, for the uh, one plus one dimension, DMRG density uh, matrix renormalization group method uh, is the most powerful tool. Actually, we can perform around uh, 1,000 uh, site simulation using the uh, PC cluster. And uh, in the DMRG, we can find the uh, ground state uh, with wave function expressed by the matrix product of state MPS using, and to obtain this ground state wave function, we utilize a kind of the variational algorithm. And uh, to, ob uh, to perform the variational algorithm, uh, we need uh, co we set the cost function as uh, this equation. So we prepare some trial wave function and uh, measure the expectation value of Hamiltonian. Uh, this is a, a, a cost function. And uh, we minimize uh, this quantity. And uh, if this quantity reaches a uh, minimum, then the trial wave function or MPS is identified as a ground state. This is a basic strategy of uh, DMRG. And uh, uh, we can also obtain the excited state in the Hamiltonian formalism by a uh, small modification of the cost function. And here we add the uh, penalty term of the orthogonalization condition with the uh, lower state. So I mean, if we would like to obtain the first excited state, it must be lowest energy state orthogonal to the ground state. And we can generate the uh, higher excited state step by step. So uh, this is a basic strategy, how to obtain the uh, matrix product state, actually ground state or excited state. And as for the uh, model, uh, as uh, briefly mentioned about that, so still, uh, non abelian gauge theory and or uh, higher dimensional quantum field theory uh, suffer from several serious issues. So here we consider the two flavor Schinger model. So namely one plus one dimensional QED, which is can be formulated without any truncation if we take the, uh, some special setup. So this is our model, okay? Uh, strategy. And uh, here, uh, now we would like to, uh, I would like to explain our model, Shinga model. So any question so far? Okay. Okay, so let me uh, move to the next session, uh, Shinga model. And uh, Shinga model 
is a one of boot toy model of the QCD. It shares a property of QCD, for instance, chiral symmetry breaking in low temperature and the confinement screening potential, which is depend on the setup, but we can discuss these quantity in also in the Schwinger model. And furthermore, there is some stable composite state like hadron in QCD. And the Lagrangian of the model is given by this form. And here we add the theta term, actually topological theta term. It's called a sign program in the conventional Monte Carlo method. And so by using several procedures, actually loose handle transformation, gauge fixing, solve the Gauss law and introduce the open boundary condition, and then the down wave time transformation. This, anyway, this uh, Lagrangian convert to the uh, Hamiltonian written by the uh, spin variable. Here, x, y, z denotes the uh, power matrices. And uh, so in this Hamiltonian, the first term uh, describes a kinetic term of electric field. So standard notation, this is uh, just the E, vector E. And uh, so the, this term shows a, a kinetic term or a hopping of electron. And this term is a, a mass term of the electron. And uh, here we uh, the, the theta term comes here. And uh, you see this is a, a, a actually electric field. So theta term uh, shows a, a, is equivalent to the constant shift of uh, electric field. And uh, you know, such a constant shift of Hamiltonian does not cause any additional difficulty. So this is uh, one advantage of the uh, Hamiltonian formalism. And another interesting uh, point of this model, because of we solve the Gauss law, so there is a all-to-all uh, interaction, site interaction of G, actually GI and GN. And for the condensed matter people, it looks very difficult to simulate of this model. However, at least the one flavor Singer model uh, is a gapped theory, even if the massless case. So the bond dimension or entanglement is finite, and the model is uh, uh, relatively easy to calculate. And uh, actually, uh, yes. On the, on the previous slide, is J something like G squared in terms of the original parameters? Right, right. This is a, 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 a yeah, a g square, and this is a one over a or something. Yeah, so. one over a. I see. Yeah. varying w doesn't amount to varying like uh, the um, I don't know current uh, current squared term, like a Thering interaction term. It's not mm -hmm. related. It, it, it's okay. It, yeah, it's okay. Maybe in this formalism, that's not how it works. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let me talk about okay. later. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let me inter uh, briefly introduce the uh, actual trial of the one flavor Schinger model. So this is a first uh, test, good testing ground to simulate the Hamiltonian formalism of the gauge theory. And uh, yeah, maybe I. Uh, miss uh, several uh, important work, but uh, there is uh, several uh, um, uh, work actually, even though, even though the uh, 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 Schwinger model with a, a sign program in the conventional method. Actually, real time evolution also investigated, actually, Schwinger effect and so on. And even in the uh, finite density theory and the entanglement entropy has been uh, investigated recently. And uh, uh, with the topological theta term is uh, very popular and uh, uh, chiral condensate uh, uh, potential between two probe charges and uh, uh, some theoretical extent so-called charge q Schinger model that Hofft anomaly matching also investigated. And as for the mass spectrum, actually, uh, Banners uh, and Carl Janssen and Ignacio Schirach uh, already uh, investigated in uh, more than 10 years ago, and uh, yeah, uh, using the DMRG algorithm. So this is a situation. And uh, uh, now we 
try to consider the multi flavor single model. And here we run into a small non trivial problem related to, well, to the ordering of the fermion and spin variable. And actually, in the case of two flavor uh, Schwinger model, so we have uh, actually two Dirac fermions on the uh, one side. And uh, we can consider at least uh, two types of ordering uh, to the one dimensional lattice fermion. So the first one is a flavor ordering. Firstly, uh, the first Dirac, uh, first flavor Dirac fermion is aligned, uh, followed the, by the uh, second flavor. So honestly speaking, this type is uh, easy to construct the numerical simulation code. And uh, another choice is a uh, first flavor, second flavor, first flavor, second flavor is aligned alternatively. So, but uh, so originally, two Dirac fermion on the same side are strongly entangled. So, if we take the flavor ordering, then the necessary bond dimension of the DMRG calculation is extremely large as a number of sites. Actually, you see, even if the uh, n equal 14 red data, need the uh, more than 1,000 bond dimension to keep the uh, uh, precision, some precision. So we take the uh, stack out order. And uh, so you see uh, n equal uh, 200 site simulation. Uh, the necessary bond dimension is uh, roughly speaking uh, 500. So we choose the uh, stack out ordering, of course. And uh, the second choice, uh, another choice exists uh, if we convert the lattice fermion to the uh, spin variable uh, using the jordan wigner transformation. And the necessary condition uh, for the lattice fermion is here, this uh, anti-commutation relation. So there are several choices to express the lattice fermion using the Pauli matrices to satisfy this condition. But here we take the disk definition. And because uh, using the, this definition, some local operator for the uh, ice spin operator and so on can be expressed by the only few uh, power matrices. And uh, so that is the reason why we choose uh, this uh, definition, jordan wigner transformation. And using the this one, uh, we can also obtain the uh, two-flavor Schwinger model written in the uh, spin variable, but it's uh, too much complicated. So please find uh, our paper, actually Appendix A, yeah, for the explicit form of the Hamiltonian for the two flavor Schinger model. OK, so uh, the introduction part uh, is- Sorry, uh, question. So, uh, so uh, these other orderings don't preserve the SUNF symmetry, SU2 flavor symmetry of the continuum theory or? Ah, uh, other, ah, uh, no. Uh, like if you I put, mean, if you put uh, bo both flavors on, this, on the same site, then you have SU2 symmetry mm -hmm. even on the lattice, right? And uh, you, you say the staggered uh, ordering will not have that? Or? Yeah, actually, if we express the, SU2 ice spin operator with a non local, very non local uh, power matrix, a product of the power matrices, then we can keep, yeah, we can keep the SU2 flavor symmetry. But it's too much complicated and, uh, yeah, calculation cost is very high, so we don't use uh, such a definition. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Actually, we did. <laughs> Actually, we did, and uh, yeah, we declined that definition. <laughs> okay, so now let's move on the main part of this talk. So here we consider three distinct methods to compute the mass spectrum of the composite state. So this is a, a brief uh, summary of the three calculation method. And the first one is a collision function scheme. So this is the same with the uh, conventional method. So 
we calculate the two point function of hadron operator O and see the long propagation time and uh, extract the uh, mass of the stable hadron. But uh, I will explain later. Uh, it is not so straightforward. And the second one is called the one point function scheme. Uh, here we use a positively uh, boundary effect to efficient compute the uh, mass spectrum. And in this scheme, uh, scheme we actually measure the one point function. And uh, but there is a, uh, we take the open boundary condition. It has uh, some edge mode, or it uh, can is equivalent to the wall source. So. We actually measure the uh, one-point function, but it is equivalent to the measure the correlation function with the edge mode or this wall source. So this is a, a brief summary of the second scheme. And the third one is a, a we named a, a it's a, a dispersion relation scheme, and we can construct the excited state using the DMRG algorithm. And uh, after a uh, generates the matrix product state, uh, we measure the energy and the momentum of the GS matrix uh, product state for excited state. And using this energy and momentum and the dispersion relation, we can extract the mass. And uh, in this third method, we have to distinguish which composite operator emerge. And uh, to do that, we also measure the uh, several quantum number. So this is a brief summary of calculation strategy. And uh, the uh, target hadron, actually meson, uh, uh, pion, and sigma meson, and yeta meson in the uh, two flavor Schwinger model. And uh, according to the uh, old paper, Coleman's old paper, uh, at theta equal zero, the lightest hadron, hadron is a uh, pion as usual. And uh, its quantum number, actually, we have several, at least three quantum number isospin operator. So we use a notation J square and JG for the isospin operator. Uh, this is uh, associated with the SU2 flavor symmetry. And another quantum number is a uh, uh, quantum operator, quantum operator uh, number is a uh, parity. And also G parity, this is a, a almost equivalent to the charge conjugation in one plus one dimension. And uh, so, and uh, the pion has uh, this quantum number JPG equal to one uh, minus plus. So, and uh, the second lightest uh, meson is a sigma iso singlet scalar meson. So JPG is a zero plus plus. And uh, the uh, third stable composite, uh, I should say that. Uh, actually, in the case of two flavor Schwinger model, according to the Coleman's paper, a uh, sigma meson does not decay to the two pion. So because the, uh, the me uh, mass of the sigma meson is lighter than the uh, two pion mass, and it uh, will be the uh, stable particle. And then third stable composite particle is yeta meson. So it's uh, a quantum number is a JPG is a zero minus minus. Okay, this is uh, uh, our cast. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, actually Monte Carlo result of the two flavor Schwinger model with the topological theta term. Actually, Fukaya and Onogi investigated the uh, pion mass as a function of theta using the Monte Carlo method 20 years ago. And uh, you see the in that uh, theta region, the signal is very noisy. That is uh, uh, because of the uh, sign problem. And uh, they also investigate the yeta meson mass and actually, this is a, a log plot of correlation function for pion open the symbol and yeta field symbol. And you see the uh, mass of the uh, yeta meson should be uh, heavier than the pion. But uh, uh, in this paper, they didn't give a uh, number of the yeta meson mass. 
and it is difficult to have a heavy Ieta meson mass in the uh, this conventional Lattice Monte Carlo method. This is a situation. And now let us uh, show you our result using the Hamiltonian formalism. So the first calculation scheme is a correlation function scheme. So as similar with the conventional Lattice uh, Monte Carlo study, we measure the spatial correlation function of pi on uh, with distance r. And uh, this is a, a log plot of the obtained data of the correlation function of the pi on. And it looks exponential decay. So we extract the, its exponent so-called effective mass. And uh, this is the effective mass as a function of r. So at the first glance, there is a plateau appear. Uh, there is a plateau in the long distance region. And if it is, would be true, then the plateau value of effective mass should be pi on mass. However, uh, please see that this small window. So different color uh, shows a different uh, precision calculation result. So blue one has uh, the calculation accuracy is a 10 to minus 10, but the red data shows a uh, high precision calculation result. 10 to minus uh, 16. So the blue data is almost plateau. However, red data, high precision calculation result show the plateau, uh, no, show the uh, slope or as a function of R. So we have to find what is happened. And uh, actually we perform the test calculation for the uh, uh, one flavor massless premium case. This is uh, uh, exactly a uh, solvable model using the bosonization technique analytically. And actually 1.1, 1, .1, uh, 1 plus one dimensional uh, point point uh, correlation function, this one uh, for the uh, free massless premium theory, uh, is given by the modified Bessel function of second kind, cannot. And its asymptotic behavior is a Yukawa type and the exponential minus MR over square root R. So, and then the effective mass uh, given by the R derivative of log of correlation function has a, a one over R correction term, plus the constant part should be mass term mass. So and uh, actually, this is a data uh, previous effective mass against one over R. And uh, the, you see the high precision calculation result. Red one shows the one uh, uh, linear behavior of the uh, one over R and uh, the extrapolated value of in the R infinity limit is almost consistent with the exact result given by this equation uh, for the uh, this massless fermion case. So, and this, the, there is a one over R correction between the uh, uh, one plus one dimensional correlation function, a point point correlation function. This is a theoretical reason. And another reason why the convergence of precision is so slow. Uh, it comes from the property of DMRG calculation. Actually, because uh, uh, DMRG can calculate the exponential correlation, and it is difficult to reproduce one over R because all such uh, uh, exponential correlation term are uh, summed up then it must be reproduced one over R term. But uh, the uh, DMRG calculation truncate in the middle with uh, some precision in the uh, singular value decomposition, then uh, such uh, infinite sum of exponential term uh, truncated, then the convergence is very slow to see the one over R correction. So that is a technical reason. Can, can I ask a very naive question at this stage? Yeah, sure. So when I see talks about conventional Lattice Monte Carlo calculations, typically what happens is you know you you 
you make similar plots and you see error bars, and they might be very small in some region, and then in the long distance limit, they blow up. And uh, well, okay, so so fits get harder. The, the, you don't you can't really follow the plateau all the way out to to infinite size. So somehow here I don't see any error bars. So imagine you didn't you weren't able to do uh, you know the much more expensive calculations, increasingly expensive calculations. Is there a way from a given calculation to estimate a systematic error bar in this DMRG thing? E, no, uh, actually, I didn't explain that. So actually, okay. DMRG is a, some kind of the deterministic calculation method. We are no I statistical did. error bar. So, yeah. Is there that a is... systematic error bar? Yeah, but the there, are there error bars? Error, yeah, uh, no, uh, statistical error bar. We don't have. A DMRG doesn't have a statistical but, error. But the systematic error, of course, uh, we have. But the, uh, the systematic error come from the uh, 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 calculation precision, like uh, this epsilon dependence. Yeah, actually, it is Basically, the, I, I guess what I'm worried about, oh, not worried, worried is the wrong word. The, the thing that I'm trying to understand is you, you're saying that you know these errors, you know, 10 to the minus 10 or whatever, is very small, naively. Mm -hmm. And yet the, the difference from the actual result is quite large. Mm -hmm. and, and here we happen to know the actual result. But if we didn't, um, and you you had difficulty doing the more expensive calculations. Ah, like okay. with conventional Monte Carlo, it tells you when it goes wrong. Like mm -hmm. you you have the error bars. It's a systematically improvable method. You have error bars. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Is there okay. such a thing in DMRG, ah, or is it yes. a uncontrolled truncation for a yeah. given? Condition? Okay, so the DMRG, yeah, just. Yeah, we try to the higher precision calculation, then we can estimate the systematic error. And, uh, and in this scheme, actually, I think the difference comes from the finite volume effect. So yeah, we, ha we have uh, open boundary conditions. So both boundary give us some finite volume effect from the boundary. Yeah, I think that yeah, the difference comes from that. I, yeah. see, I see. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, thank you for asking. That's a very important question. Yeah, Sorry, so you. eventually you also want to extrapolate to infinite L and infinite N, right? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> right. Okay. It's okay. So let me move to the second one. Okay. So uh, the second uh, scheme is a one-point function scheme. And uh, here we calculate the expectation value of a single operator or hadron operator or at the site X. And uh, in this work, we use uh, actually open boundary condition. Then uh, at the boundary, some edge mode, which is a superposition of various quantum number, uh, uh, various quantum state emerge. And actually, at the theta equal zero, ground state is a, a isosingulate state. And the edge mode can couple to the Yeta meson and a sigma meson. And this is actually obtained data of log plot. You can see the nicely scaling. And in this scheme, Essentially, we take the uh, actually sum of over the uh, imaginary time tau, so it's played all the low lying mode pro projection. Then there is no Yukawa type correction, and uh, the uh, the data of the one point function scales a single exponential. So uh, we fit the data using the, this function and find the value of uh, mass yeta, for yeta meson and for uh, sigma meson. And uh, there is a uh, uh, several data point with a uh, different uh, calculation precision, but uh, I think uh, 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 such a precision dependence is not observed in this scheme. And uh, so in this sense, we can take the cost uh, precision so uh, it is very economical scheme of the actual calculation. On the other hand, in the case of pion, we need a, a tricky procedure. 
And uh, at the theta equal zero, as I said, uh, the uh, ground state is ice singlet. And uh, so uh, once we measure the uh, single pion state, so the expectation value of pion equal to zero everywhere at theta equal zero. But in the Schwinger model, it is known that there is a, a Haldane phase uh, beyond the theta equal pi. And the Haldane phase has a non-trivial edge mode in the open boundary system. And the ice spin half mode, J equal one half mode, emerge at the both edges. Then the uh, ground state has a two by two degeneracy and it includes the ISO triplet uh, state. And uh, actually, mass uh, spectra is equivalent to the one at the uh, theta equal zero. So we calculate the one point function of uh, pi on using the ground state at the theta equal to pi Hamiltonian. And uh, from the uh, exponent of the uh, uh, one point function, we obtain the pi on mass. And uh, so it is a very tricky procedure based on the field theoretical knowledge. Honestly speaking, you are, you are proposed this method. But it's smart, very economical. And uh, so finally, I'd like to show you the third calculation scheme. So the dispersion yeah, relation scheme. Too. Yeah, sure. Uh, on the previous slide, uh, it seems that you had some uh, uh, strange uh, effects on the plot uh, at short distances. Do you have an interpretation? Ah, this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have any explanation. So just uh, some strong boundary effect. But uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. This is a very strange. Yeah, but uh, I don't have idea. So. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. And uh, now uh, I'd like to explain my uh, favorite scheme, so-called the dispersion relation scheme. So uh, actually, uh, it is a completely different idea from previous two schemes. And I can say this is a unique technique available in the Hamiltonian formalism. And now, as I briefly explained it, we can generate the uh, excited state. So we ge actually generated the matrix product state up to the 20th excited state using DMRG and actually modified uh, the cost function with an orthogonal condition as a penalty term. And the left uh, panel shows the energy gap for each else excited state. And the right panel shows a momentum square uh, for the excited, each, uh, excited state. And uh, you can easily see some uh, three degenerated state in this plot. And uh, some uh, their candidate of the actually pion, isotriplet pion, and uh, their uh, also a candidate of ice singlet, G1 and G1, this one and this one. So, and uh, yeah, then the, uh, to distinguish them, we measure the quantum number, actually ice spin and G parity and actual parity of the generated uh, MPS matrix product state. And uh, so, and uh, let me briefly introduce each operator, actually form of the each operator. And uh, please see our paper for detail. But anyway, the first one is a momentum operator. And uh, so the, in our definition, the momentum operator uh, depend on the uh, flavor. Actually, first flavor has uh, this form. And the second flavor is given by this equation. And uh, uh, unfortunately, because of open boundary condition, you know, so you know, open boundary condition breaks the translational invariance. So exactly speaking, this momentum operator does not commute with the uh, Hamiltonian. But uh, as already show you, uh, we can see uh, practically it works very well, uh, like in this plot. 
And the, uh, the second operator is the ice spin operator for flavor SU2 symmetry. So our notation is a J square and JG. And the, the uh, exactly uh, uh, form is uh, given by this one. And the, the our uh, ice spin operator uh, it does commute with uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So this is an exact operator. And uh, another one is a uh, uh, charge conjugation operator. And it is also not exact operator because of open boundary condition and finite lattice spacing. So, and actually this is a, a small test calculation result for free fermion theory with periodic boundary condition case. So we obtain this uh, orange data or blue data. And uh, so blue data has a coarse lattice spacing and orange one is a, a rather a finer a lattice spacing. So, uh, so ideally it should be the plus one or minus one, but uh, it uh, the but uh, the in general speaking the value of c is a uh, uh, takes a uh, complex value. However, in the continuum limit it approaches to the minus one. So in our study, uh, we uh, see the uh, actually sign of real part of C, and it is a remnant of the exact C. Uh, a charge conjugation operator. So this is our strategy. And also parity operator given by this equation and G parity, it is uh, essentially same with uh, uh, charge conjugation, but it commutes the uh, ice spin operator ideal case. And uh, so this um, uh, parity and G parity uh, takes a complex value, however, we see the uh, sign of the uh, real part of this operator and uh, identify the, its quantum number. So this is our strategy. And uh, so let me show you the uh, result. So first of all, we investigate the G's uh, triplet state, isotriplet state. Actually, a uh, measured value of J square, J, G is a uh, two, and one zero minus one, one zero minus one. So it should be a ice triplet state. And G parity is a, a positive and the parity of the lowest mode is a negative. So the quantum number GPG should be one minus plus. This is a pi on quantum number. Very well. And uh, the, uh, uh, as for the uh, ice singlet channel, we check the uh, quantum number G's state. So the orange state has, uh, uh, first of all, uh, all G's uh, state has uh, uh, J equal to zero and J G is equal to zero. And the orange data has a uh, G parity is a positive and the uh, uh, lowest uh, mode, the parity is a uh, positive. So the orange one should has a, a JPG equal to zero plus plus. It should be a sigma meson scalar. And the green one, this one and this one, is has a, a negative G parity and negative parity. So JPG is zero minus minus. So it should be yeta meson. So, and uh, now we can identify which state is a uh, which composite state, so which hadron. So we plot the energy and uh, momentum square for each meson with different color and fit the uh, data using the dispersion relation of this equation. And uh, uh, finally, uh, we extrapolate uh, k goes to zero limit and obtain the uh, mass for each so, meson. So, so a question is, so, so why don't you see the, the two pion state before you see the Edo meson? Oh, that's a very good question. Actually, I didn't touch uh, this triplet. So this triplet should be the pi pi scattering state. 
So, yeah, I didn't uh, talk about uh, in our paper detail, but uh, yeah, we will touch in next paper. Thank you very much for a very good question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, this is a surprising. We, we, we can see the, uh, such a scattering state heuristically. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And from this plot, anyway, so the uh, yeah, single particle state, the, uh, this is a pi on mass and sigma meson mass and yeta meson mass. So this is a result. And uh, finally, uh, this is a summary plot of three mesons obtained by three calculation method. So different calculation methods show the different color. And uh, so first of all, uh, you can see the result is almost scheme independent, even though we don't take the thermodynamic limit nor uh, continuum limit, but uh, it's uh, almost uh, consistent. So it looks very promising. And uh, that result is consistent with uh, uh, some several uh, theoretical prediction. And uh, actually the pion is a lightest state and uh, uh, next sigma and the yeta. And actually the heavier yeta meson mass is related to the U1 program and the leading order of the yeta meson mass uh, come from the energy gap. So mu, so in our notation, so mu equal to 0 0.8, it is almost consistent with obtained the yeta meson mass. And, uh, and in our, uh, uh, actually furthermore, some semi-classical calculation gives a prediction for the uh, mass ratio between sigma meson and pi on, and it uh, will be the uh, square root pi. This is uh, uh, obtained by some approximation, but uh, the uh, actual obtained value of the, this mass ratio is uh, almost uh, uh, consistent with uh, uh, this prediction within 5% deviation. So this is- uh, <clears throat> If I understand correctly, this result is in the limit of small uh, fermion mass, right? Ah, mm. Yes, that's this right. Ratio. Yeah. Mm -mm. The theoretical so, result. I thought it follows from the sine Gordon model, like yeah, some right. integrability result. Right, right. So I think it's not so small, but uh, yeah, yeah, it is interesting to investigate the mass dependence to reproduce uh, this prediction. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. And now let me summarize my talk. So just one hour, I hope. So we study the three calculation method uh, for the hadron spectra in Hamiltonian formalism. And here is a pros and cons for each uh, scheme. And uh, as for the first scheme, so-called the correlation function scheme, so the advantage is a broad applicability uh, of the uh, method. And uh, however, uh, sometimes it's sensitive to the uh, precision accuracy of a bond dimension in DMRG calculation and also finite volume effect. And uh, so, but a uh, technical uh, issue coming from the DMRG calculation, uh, uh, actually that slow convergence problem will be solved if we uh, use the quantum computation. And the second uh, scheme, it is a most economical scheme. So we need uh, to increase nor the bond dimension, uh, uh, neither uh, the bond dimension, nor the system size L. And, uh, but this advantage is uh, this one. So only we can investigate only lowest state having a giving uh, given quantum number of the boundary state. So this, and we need uh, some uh, deep theoretical knowledge, pre-knowledge to obtain the uh, desired hadron mass spectra. The, and uh, the third one, third scheme, uh, dispersion relation scheme, uh, the advantage is that uh, we can obtain the uh, various state heuristically so including the pi-pi scattering state, 
And uh, we can see the uh, direct, directly wave function, so-called uh, S wave or P wave state. And, but the disadvantage of this scheme is a computational cost. We have to generate the many number of excited states. It's very high uh, cost <laughs> calculation uh, rather than the, the other one. And there is a, 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 some straightforward future direction. So the most important one must be the non-zero theta region. So all our uh, calculation, we just focus on the theta equal zero to investigate the feasibility to, for the feasibility test of the, our calculation uh, method. But the non-zero theta region should be, we have to investigate it. So we now already uh, has a preliminary result for the two flavor single model. And this is our preliminary result. So <clears throat> we obtained the pi on mass and the sigma meson mass. So surprisingly, sigma, uh, the mass ratio of square root three, uh, keeping this uh, mass ratio, the both pi on mass and sigma meson mass goes to the uh -huh massless. Actually, at the theta equal pi, uh, the theory is equivalent to the level one SU2 West Zuminovite model. So this is a conformal field theory. So pi on should be the uh, massless mode. So we can reproduce that. So let please con compare, uh, compare this uh, uh, result by Monte Carlo. It looks very good. So this is a preliminary result for the non-zero uh, theta region. And also our calculation method itself can be applied to the uh, QCD-like theory, even if the uh, finite density region. And the, for the uh, technically, we would like to find some efficient algorithm to generate the uh, Ex, uh, excited state for the third, especially for the third method. So we try to such an improvement of the calibration now. So that is all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. Mm. Are there any questions from folks in the audience? Mm. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so I, I'm actually a bit confused um, about when when you try to fit the numerics to the to the to the analytics uh, the 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 mass from from some analytic method, um, because uh, I if I understand correctly that the 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 mass you try to fit is first take the the continue the continuum limit and then it and then take R goes mm. to infinity, right? But now the numerics you first feed, for example, the 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 L and N and then extrapolate to R. Um, that's I uh, I'm just confused to how this um this limits the these two limits can commute. And if it doesn't commute, I, I just worry for ah. particular L and N, the numerics will just go crazy. Ah, uh, okay. So you are talking about the past one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's that that, mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. The, this sort this of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That that must be important mm. question. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This is a very naive estimation of the uh the extrapolated value of the something. So yeah, yeah. It should be correct. Uh, yeah. We yeah. Ideally, we take the continuum limit and then. Uh, have the uh, extrapolation of one of our, our yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your comment. Yeah, concerning uh, say they call pi, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hopefully the, so you were making a plot for still a m equal 0.1, right? right. Oh. Yes, so the pion should not go exactly massless there, I would think. Ah, the theta term? <laughs> yeah, we, this yeah, this this yeah. plot. Yeah. Basically, pion goes to massless, but the sigma doesn't. <laughs> pion is uh, it's difficult to see, but it goes to, yeah, almost zero consistent. But uh, actually, yeah, uh, 
can you, can you tell the difference between uh, <clears throat> exponentially small value and uh, zero value? Um, yeah, the, yeah, mm, ah, so exponentially small mm. and zero, exactly zero. Mm, right. Mm. Mm, I, I have no idea, but, uh, because in our in our last paper we claimed uh, that it shouldn't be exactly zero. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should. Uh, yeah, we should. Uh, maybe one one possibility is a continuum extrapolation. Maybe. Right. Right. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to tell the ex the exponentially small value. Mm. I guess. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And uh, yeah, and uh, I worry about uh, actually Sigma Mason. Yeah, actually Sigma Mason is uh, mm -hmm. much difficult to see the masses. Uh, e even though in this plot, this uh, is a large discrepancy, honestly speaking. So, mm -hmm. but uh, anyway, yeah, this is a, uh, yeah, there is maybe some improvement is necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I also have a question. So uh, you mentioned um, an old result, uh, like probably due to Coleman, uh, uh, that the sigma is stable because its mass is um, mm -hmm. less than the mass of two pions. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, is there some first principles argument for this, uh, like some kind of QCD inequality argument type of thing, uh -huh. or is this some like how how solid is this argument? Does it depend on any parameters, or is it always true? Ah, uh, yeah. Actually, this is uh, based on the WKB approximation that calculation. Yeah. Then so it's even some the, this prediction square root is, three. Is it some small mass? Like mm. it's something that you can show by specific computation a small mass limit. E that, yes, uh, small mass, but non-zero, I think. But non-zero, of course, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> of course. <laughs> I guess then, strictly speaking, it's like, with, unless one finds some deep argument to say mm. that this hierarchy must be maintained, it's logically possible as you increase the mass, uh, the, yeah. the sigma goes unstable. Is that, mm. is that right? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. And I, naively... I you know, if the mass is not so small, it should be cheaper because you shouldn't have any kind of critical slowing down or something. So this is something that could numerically, it could be explored numerically. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, large mass limit is uh, uh, another difficult region, actually. Large mass limit is difficult, is that right? Mm -hmm. It, uh, yeah, some people uh, try to investigate the numerically, but yeah, ideally it should be the just uh, Maxwell theory. So all fermions are decoupled, so, but... Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the interesting the interesting region is mass of order of the gauge coupling, right? Uh, That's the one that by hand you you're not going to study, but, but maybe mm -hmm. with numerics mm -hmm. you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. If not. Uh, yeah, so cool. Thank you so much again for giving us uh, this talk at such a late hour yeah. in Japan. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yes, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everybody. It's like, well, I hope to see you somewhere not too long from now. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and I heard like Igor it. will come to Kyoto. Right, December. right. Yeah, yeah. I'm very December. Looking yeah, yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you'll okay. be there. You'll be during the school. Or... Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I I am a student of your school. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, I registered. <laughs> you should be the teacher. <laughs> no, no. I'm. I I hope I will be a student. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can discuss there for sure. Yeah, it would be it would be good to discuss. So. Ah, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. Thanks yeah, so much. Thank you. Okay. thank you very much. Good so night. Nice to see you. Bye-bye.